lab uh, in collaboration with uh, Todd Coleman and Renard Gillac, who is my neuroscience advisor. Um, we look into how we have these very simple animals that have a very simple brain, and they have a, a set of behaviors. You know, they are not as complex as humans that have many behaviors. They have um, a, a very finite set of behaviors, and we try to understand how their simple brains coordinate that behavior. So for us, it's easier because those animals have. Um, it's easier than to study the, the complex human brain because the, those animals have a limited number of neurons. They are bigger th than human neurons and you can really track down what's activating what and what's directing uh, what behavior. Uh, we have this idea that the animal is trying to solve uh, or optimize his cost function. So. We are using uh, both Markov processes and optimization theories, some, some, um, some theories in that, so that we can model the animal's behavior. And what we want to do is um, observe both uh, normal animals and then have an adapted animal and see how that cost function changes. So if the animal is uh, going around and he, we work with uh, sea slugs, they are natural predators. Um, and so if we can alter its behavior through addiction, we want to understand how that cost function is changing, how the neural processes are changing. So that's when we are bridging uh, electrical engineering within like the math of Markov processes and inverse optimal control and control theory with uh, neuroscience and neurobiology. I think one of the first things that will come out if we can show uh, how this optimization is happening and how the animal, how the the cost function and the, the rewards of the animal change when he's addicted versus when he's not addicted. This algorithm we are working on uh, in collaboration with other students and um, uncle who is a postdoc, I think that we really could bring um, a different approach to the way uh, we analyze addictive behavior and if we uh, we are planning on bringing also neural recordings so that will also be unique. What we think is that in the animal's brain, um, one of the theories of addiction uh, assumes that there is a rewiring or that addiction uses the same pathway as learning uh, and the same pathway as reward for feeding habits. So that's the hypothesis we are using with our animals. We are trying to see if, uh, when we have this addicted animal, if what's happening in the, in the reward network, in the reward pathways, is really changing. And the, the model we are using, the inverse optimal uh, control model, it can be used not only for this specific animal, it's a very uh, generic, uh, per se, algorithm that can be applied to different, to different uh, animals and different um, models. And when you start working um, with interdisciplinary research, um, is you have to be comfortable going beyond your you know boundaries. You know, and for me as an electrical engineer, I think everything in terms of logic and math, and it is or is not, you know, binary. And when you go into science, you have this continuous line that you have to be comfortable working with and experiments that you are not a uh, simulation in the computer. You know, you actually have to be there present, and it can work, and it cannot, and you just have to be, you know, comfortable with that. But it's also very challenging. It's one of the things I enjoy the most. It's just being able to, for me as a electrical engineer, to be doing dissections and you know separating neurons. It's very, it's it's really, it's, I think it's really amazing.